Around the clock, the music never stops. MTV Music Television. These are the offices of MTV, uh, where the decisions are made that give MTV the look that the channel has. Producers, writers, directors, yes, even the VJs all have their offices here. These are the people that you never see who bring MTV to you. I think MTV certainly has had a phenomenal effect on the way music is perceived. My name is Les Garland. My title is Vice President of Programming. Uh, the buck stops right here in this office, usually right under here somewhere. Uh, but I'm, I, I'm responsible for the programming. I'm responsible for the music. I'm responsible for the promotions. I'm responsible for uh, the VJ segments. I'm responsible for the music news. Everything that goes on the channel eventually comes through here. Once the idea for music television was approved and everybody said, let's do it, then they had to come up with a way to do it. That was in March of 1981. Uh, by April and May, they, you know, staffs began, you know, people began being hired, uh, producers, directors, and they said, wait a minute, we're going to need some disc jockeys. No, we're not going to need disc jockeys. We're going to need video jocks. This is television. So I said, oh, okay, I'll go audition. I came right to this very set, and I walked in and had like a five-minute audition, and it was such a funny transition. I walked in thinking, Oh, well, what do I care? It's 20 minutes out of an afternoon, no big deal. And I walked out saying, I want that job. I didn't think I was going to get it, of course. There was uh, about 1,000 people in New York, about 1,000 people in L.A., and I hear about 500 or so in Chicago. And it was narrowed down to none in Chicago, and um, uh, I think 10 in New York and then 10 in L.A., and then it was cut to the five of us. And they're, they're, they're not disc jockeys, and they're not TV hosts. They fall somewhere in the middle. MTV operates, uh, in a sense, very much like a radio station. I don't think that's ever been done on television before. But the major part of our product is music, and music is really the star of the show. With MTV coming in, uh, into the U.S. market and being as successful as it's been, the video production has, has gone up probably 10 times since August of 81. Back in those days, we used to look at maybe five clips a week, seven clips a week. On a really good week, we would look at maybe eight or nine and go, wow, we've got eight or nine this week. Now it's like 20 or 25 a week. The library has grown from uh, two to 300 when we began to where we are today, up to 1,200. So there's a lot more music being on, you know, a lot of different acts, a lot of different, you know, kinds of rock and roll music, you know, from, from contemporary to the mainstream AOR artists to, to those who are now labeled new music artists, you know, so, so there's a bit more variety just because there's more product on the channel. I think there's no doubt about music styles changing because of MTV, and that's not to brag. That's simply because of the fact that we play a lot of new music, and I think you've seen the changes come about in radio as well because of MTV's presence. We were playing Video Killed the Radio Star, first song we ever played on MTV. The record was already two years old, I'm trying to remember exactly, two or three years old, and all of a sudden it started selling again and we were the only people in the country playing it. There's records that nobody in America is playing that we play in video, and the records are selling not just one and two pieces every month, a lot. The record stores are happy to have us around. The music is computerized at MTV in the, in the sense that we know where everything is. That's the only reason it's computerized. It's not non-human. I think some people confuse computerization with non-human. Uh, it's only because we have so many clips, it's the easiest way to keep track of them. Once the decision has been made as to how often you'll see a certain clip, all that information is fed into a computer, and then it spits back out the rotation. It's been programmed to, to mix uh, uh, an older uh, album-oriented rock classic like a Jethro Tull, and then to come into a brand new clip like a Haircut 100, and then to go to a Jay Giles Band song, for example, just for, for music balance. We use a computer to tell us what should go into every segment. That, that's why we don't forget a commercial, we don't forget a commercial mention, we don't forget a song, we don't forget a contest. The computer lays it all out for us. MTV is, is a real complex process of things that have to go on the air. I don't think anybody's ever attempted to do this much programming on television 365 days a year. For me, three years ago, to even imagine being involved in something like this was, it was no way. 
happens. This doesn't happen. But, but what happens, where we're sitting right now talking, is where the creative ideas come from. These ideas are then somehow miraculously translated to the people in our studio, the directors, the producers, the executive producer of the channel, and so forth, and translated on to the crew of people who produce each hour you know, of the 24-hour day over in our studio, which is some 15 blocks from here. Once it's all laid down on master one-inch tape, it's then thrown in the trunk of a 1957 Chevy and raced an hour out of Manhattan to uh, Smithtown, New York at our network operations center. It's funny because around here we pretend like we're live, but I suppose in actuality we're not live since, uh, since what they do is pre-recorded you know, some eight to ten hours prior to when the viewer sees it. The VJ segments are on different tapes. From the now released album State of Confusion, that from the kinks come dancing. MTV is having a hot The commercials are on different tapes. The channel promotional announcements are on different tapes. The songs are on different, you know, all this has to be mixed by someone, and that's where Smithtown, New York comes into play, the network operations center. They have several carousels that, that you know, contain the, the various elements of the programming that are all mixed. There is an engineer sitting there that, that mixes everything live. So we are mixed live, however everything's on tape. We then transmit the, you know, the, the programming to a, to a bird in outer space 23,300 miles out there, and it's sent back down to Earth to wherever in the United States of America to a cable system, let's say in Dallas, Texas, and then it's distributed to the homes on the wire, on the cable. That's how cable TV works, and that's how MTV gets there. MTV, music television, an idea whose time has come. You know, according to that tape, you have a library of 1,200 videotapes and growing. What do you think is the most popular? Well, Maureen, that's exactly <laughs> what uh, one of the questions are that I have. Uh -huh. I want to ask that in a little bit. Okay, great. Well, we'll get to that. Grab your cube consoles. Nina will be asking the first MTV question as you watch one of their award-winning promos. Get your cube consoles and watch this. Okay, well, you have those cube councils ready because here is the first question that we wanted to ask you. What bands would you like to see more of on MTV? Press button number one for Duran Duran or button number two, Def Leppard. Button three, Iron Maiden, Bee Gees for four or Journey of Five. Touch now. Night in Stereo. I'm Nina Blackwood filling in for J.J. Jackson. This hour, some rock and roll with Loverboy. The Motels, Van Halen, and the Paul McCartney world premiere coming up in just a few minutes. I'm the production manager on MTV, and I'm standing on the west side of Manhattan in front of the studio where we actually do all the taping. Inside is our set. We average about 60 hours a week in front of the camera every week. But today's even a particularly busy day. We've got to do portions of our liner notes interview show. We've got a contest drawing. We've got some promos to take care of. And I think I better go inside and make sure it's all going all right. No rock and roll on Sunday. Never on a Sunday. That's the order from a judge in Ohio. It may force Journey to reschedule an outdoor concert near Columbus. What is it like to be a VJ at MTV? It's hard work, first off. Not that I thought that being a VJ here was going to be easy by any means. I knew it was going to be a lot of fun, and it is a lot of fun. What you see on the camera when we are talking to you about what clips are coming up music, news, whatever we're talking about, we really are having a good time because we enjoy the music, we enjoy what we're doing, but it's hard work. It's a team effort television. Everything has to be done at one time. Everything has to be coordinated at the same time. When the picture comes up, the audio has to be up. Any special effects all have to be done by the same people. And director's responsibility is to give those people cues to fulfill their responsibility. Well, as director, I am the one that has to make the final decision. Um, as far as uh, snapping the whip is concerned, um, yes, yeah, sometimes people don't agree with your decision, but necessarily <clears throat> one person has to make that decision because we're under a lot of pressure here. And the person that sits immediately to my left is the video switcher, who is
is um, responsible for um, punching up the pictures, mixing any kind of effects that I need. Um, as he's mainly concerned, or she is mainly concerned, with the video portion. And uh, then we're also, we have people in tape, because we have roll-ins of stringer reports um, done outside of the studio. Those people have to take uh, cues from the director as far as when to roll those in. We also have audio, who controls not only the microphone uh, of the VJ, but also uh, the audio coming in from the roll-ins, and they're responsible to uh, director's cues. We have um, our Chiron operator, and we and the Chiron is 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 the um, are the words you see on the screen, and uh, we use that most often showing concert dates. We got concert information. Kansas is on the road. We got a bunch of concert dates for Kansas in the Midwest, so if you're watching in that area, listen up. Next hour, it is tour dates for the Stray Cats. We're gonna take a short break, and coming up, got some Rolling Stones video music, so do not miss it. I think all of our, our roles uh, differ for each of us. We each feel that we are probably a different part of the process. I like to think of myself as the glue for the whole thing. Uh, the video is, is great and it's well produced and it's slick, but it's, there's not this human quality I think is real important and I, I want to be that. I want to be the human that's on this, this channel. Somebody that, uh, uh, of course, you, you look at the videos and they look fantastic and everyone watching is enjoying them, but I want to be able to uh, have someone watch me and say, boy, this guy looks like a friend of mine, and I, I understand what he's saying, or he turned me on to something new. It's not so much, uh, you know, setting aside, like, here's TV and here's the audience, because we seem to be in between, uh, the go-between between the audience and also their stars, you know, the people that they like, the, the musicians and their favorite bands. Each VJ has five hours to do. And in those five hours, in the five regular hours, they do six segments um, in an hour. One hour of actual VJ production in the studio eventually translates into five hours on the end. So what happens is while the VJ is not actually watching the video clip, they are reading a computer rundown. Actually, our social producer is reading a computer rundown, which says we are coming out of <clears throat> so-and-so clip, and it will be going to this clip. And the car is helped out the young man. We'll be talking about it after this. Okay. Roger? We'll go. Okay. I, think I, I think I got it. Yellow throw on you. Is that is this okay? Warp uh, perspective here. Watch. It's like, you know, very conceptual. J.J. Jackson with you. I got the music news for you here on MTV. Music news is, uh, is, is a fascinating area. Every morning there's a, uh, a news meeting. We have an editorial director who conducts the meeting with the day's producer, uh, who's also the next day's director, the associate producer who acts as the writer, and staff people who will be news gatherers, researchers, and writers. They'll go through a myriad of news stories. Um, each one will be given a weight. A heavyweight story about the Rolling Stones might appear in every hour's newscast. A lighter story about a lesser known group might appear every fourth or fifth hour. Once, uh, once every three months, uh, one of the producer directors does a uh, interview show called Liner Notes. That's what I did here today. All you saw was just the wraparound segments. Uh, what we do then is then we take the, what I did today, take it into post-production, and put together the segments themselves. So what I did today only took about 10 minutes, but overall the entire show will probably take me about 30 hours to do one half-hour show. The one best thing about being an MTV video jock uh, is getting to be around the music. If you, were, uh, if you were ever into music like I have been all my life, it's always been sort of my hobby. Uh, being right in the center of the music industry is really exciting. Meeting, meeting the stars, meeting the people that make the music, meeting the people behind the music, uh, that's all very exciting to be right in the middle of it. Well, two years ago I was in college, so this is very, it's very new to me in that I have a job, let alone a job where 
Andy Summers and the Rolling Stones are involved. It's, been, it's incredibly exciting. All the record companies are sending in their video clips. Everyone is working with us now. Everyone believes in the strength of MTV. We've had everybody in the studio from the Go-Go's, Blondie, David Bowie's coming in next, next month, Mick Jagger. Mick Jagger wishes MTV a happy birthday. Happy birthday, MTV. Hi, I'm Robert Plant. Happy birthday, MTV. I think MTV is revolutionary because it's the first. I think there'll be many others to come in the future, but it's wonderful being a part of the first and to seeing it grow and to seeing ourselves grow, as not just in front of the camera, but those behind the camera, because it takes so many people you know, to get this thing off the ground, each and every day, that is. I definitely think MTV is changing music history and is an important part of it. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for that, because I think that, that rock and roll, which I love, and I think matter so much is is in trouble and I think that we have here the possibility to help MTV could change the course of American music you know it, it can become a very powerful medium in, in in the entertainment business not just the music business but the entertainment business in general because nothing like this has ever been done before uh, for years we've all heard people say where's the next Beatles you know where's the next Beatles is there ever going to be another Beatles you know, maybe it wasn't going to be a band maybe it'll turn out to be an MTV that'll get this 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 whole new excitement to the music industry again television used to be called the vast wasteland that was before music television MTV what do you think about these tapes, Nina? Well, it's like it's sort of watching home movies or oh. something in the family <laughs> back, back there, too. And uh, one of the directors that's working with us at MTV uh, used to work here, from what I, I understand. Think maybe Jeff, Jeff Bolton, Bolton, I think. Yeah. 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 So I feel like his presence is around here somewhere <laughs> still. Probably. Uh, is. Which is very <laughs> funny, actually. You know, MTV's popularity is obviously because of the video clips and the VJs, but uh, the special features like liner notes, guest. VJs, concerts, and others add to it. Which of these features do you think is most popular? That actually is my second question. Oh, I, great. Okay. I, I'm starting to get the feel of what it's like <laughs> here to ask a question and have this instant response, you know, so uh -huh. that's, that's exactly what I'm going to okay, talk Okay, well, about. we'll yeah. do it then. Grab your Cube console as Nina has another question for you, just like before. We'll show you one of those great promotions and then ask you a question. Please touch in because MTV really wants to know. So get your Cube consoles and watch this. <laughs> Well, here's another question for you, and uh, it's which of the following special features on MTV do you like best? And for button number one, guest VJ Knight, and that's artists come in and, uh, you know, they do what we do, actually. Daryl Hall and John Oates appeared last week. Button num number two, the MTV Basement Tapes. And we play unsigned bands from all across the country on that, and uh, people get to vote. Not exactly like you do here, but they call in on that particular one. Then button number three, Liner Notes, our interview show, award-winning show on Sunday nights. And then we have the MTV Saturday Night Concerts and the World Premier your videos on button number five, so touch now. We'll be taking a short break, and when we come back, you'll be seeing interviews with the people who designed the promotions, like the one you just saw, and we'll be showing you the results of Nina's second interactive question. Later, we'll be finding out about the VJ's greatest thrills, answering your phone call questions, and sharing Nina's performance on the rock and roll harp. Jefferson and you can help your city win a valuable grand prize on Quizzles just by touching in on your cube console. What's a Quizzle? A Quizzle can be a word jumble or an observation test. It can even be a math game. By solving the Quizzles, you help your city score points in the month-long competition for our grand prize. Plus, if you send us an idea and we use it on the show, we'll send you a Quizzles t-shirt. So don't forget, play Quizzles every Monday night, 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 Central, only on this channel and only on Cube. 
Are you telling me you turned down 210 grand? They sell justice. I myself would take it and run like a thief. I'm sure you wouldn't. They hide the truth. I can subpoena you, you know. Well, maybe you just better do that. They bend the law. When I walk out that door, the offer is withdrawn. They killed her. For this man, it's his last chance. I can win it. I can win this case. Paul Newman, The Verdict, rated R. Welcome back to MTV Behind the Scenes. I'm your host, Maureen McCullough, and this is our special guest, Nina Blackwood. Let's take a look at the results to that last question. And wow, Nina, look at that. 43% of viewers wow. touched in on Saturday night concerts. Now that, that is interesting, because I was trying to figure out earlier um, what exactly was going to win on that guest uh -huh. VJ night. Well, what did you think? Uh, well, someone here was betting on that yeah. one, actually. I won't give any names, but 24% <laughs> on guest VJ night. night. And then yeah. Basement Tape 7. Now, see, I would have lost because I, I, uh, I, I'm I, quite fond of that because I like, you know, the whole thing about discovering uh -huh. new bands, and I think that's that's uh, pretty neat. And yeah. premiere of videos, 18%. 18%. That's interesting. That's but the Saturday night concert, well, that's great. I'm glad. I'm glad because it's in stereo yeah. and everything, and you get to, you know, it's the next best thing. I won't say that line, but... Uh -huh. Uh, to be in there, <laughs> I guess. I, I think I'm allowed to say that. I don't know. <laughs> sure anyway, I already said it. Too late. Okay. I have a question about the uh, guest VJs. Who do you think were the best? Um, I can't say, you know, really who was better than the other because they're each all different personalities. But uh, I did enjoy Danny Aykroyd yeah. was there, and he's uh, quite a clever fellow. He's pretty funny. Yeah, you know, he's actually very nice. funny. Uh -huh. And uh, then Jonathan Cain and Neil Shung from uh, Journey yeah. also came by, and they were nice. They had some guests uh -huh. coming in, all sorts of people. Daryl Hall and John Oates, as I said before, were on last mm -hmm. week, and uh, it's all it's all nice. It's very interesting to see what a musician and artist does when they're put in uh, to the position like you and I right. actually uh -huh. is, you know, uh -huh. it takes positions. on a whole other, whole other characteristic. It's kind of reversed. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and what about liner notes? Who do you think uh, most, you were most starstruck by on liner notes? Um, well, I haven't really like been starstruck, you know, it's always, it, I, I like to meet everybody that comes in, mm -hmm. so I can't really answer it that way, but um, I, I'm fond of Ray Davies. I thought Are that you? was nice, and that was just on a couple couple weeks ago. I didn't do the interview, but uh, Mark did uh -huh. the interview for that. And uh, oh, also, I did an interview. I don't know if it was on the internet or not with Warren Zevon. Uh -huh. That was real nice. And well, lots great. of people. Okay. Everybody that comes in <laughs> is very unique. I'm sure. So it's yeah. hard to. It'd you be know. interesting. Well, you know, MTV is constantly holding the greatest contests, from one night stands with bands like The Who and Fleetwood Mac to an entire house party giveaway. Well, did you ever get to go along on any of the uh, contests? Yeah, Alan Hunter and myself went to um, the Halloween oh, yeah. uh, house party, mm -hmm. Halloween party in, <laughs> in Connecticut. And that was great. Was we, it? we had to dress up, too. What would which, which you dress up I don't like? Know. Well, I, di I didn't really like no. get too much of a character. Uh, mm -hmm. Alan and I, though, were you know, we were out and we had to dance around and stuff. <laughs> and uh, I don't think uh, those people were, they, they were very, very nice, you know. And here this, like, truckload of people came into their house and just took over, rearranged yeah. the outside, you know, in the yard. And, but everybody had a good time. That's and, great. That's, that's nice. great. Well, you know, the concepts behind the contest are so alluring. Have you ever wondered who thinks them up and who comes up with the wild promotion ideas? Let's find out as we take our next behind-the-scenes look into MTV. It could happen to you. You could win on MTV. Here are some of the prizes we've already given away. It's a limousine for the night. Oh. And Hawaiian Holiday with Debo, a VHS recorder, and Warner Home Video Cassettes. We've given away a Sony widescreen TV, a Pac-Man game, and a Ms. Pac-Man game. Even given away dinner with Fleetwood Mac. This is Johnny Olson speaking. Thanks, Johnny. People really win on MTV. This is the winner. Will you be next? As director of programming at MTV, I basically um, oversee the day-to-day -day operations of the channel. Re Les Carlin, as the vice president, will kind of is responsible for everything. I might just kind of do the day-to-day -day, uh, pieces that come up, problems, lots of problems, solve the problems, uh, come up with a lot of promotion ideas. In that, I used to be promotion director at MTV, so come up with the uh, the, the one-night stands, the uh, 
the uh, oh, Devo Hawaiian holidays, the fantasy type promotions that lend themselves perfectly to a channel like MTV. It's time to win as another new contest erupts on MTV. Tell them about the prizes, Don Pardo. It's an Hawaiian holiday for two. If that's all I did here was think of contests, it would be a blast because I would just lock myself into, into a, a closet with MTV and just think of the greatest fantasy promotions I could ever dream up. And those are always the best way. I mean, I'm, I'm a rock and roll music fan myself. So uh, for me to hop on a Learjet to go see Fleetwood Mac in concert, uh, that would be, uh, you know, God, what a great deal. Pick me up at 1 o'clock in a limousine, take me off to the airport. I fly to the uh, scene of the show, meet the band, have dinner with them, see the uh, concert, hop in a limo back to my Learjet and home. I mean, that's how Mick Jagger would see a concert. The contests kind of vary. Sometimes they're small, neat little giveaways that, that uh, anyone would like to have. And you know those nifty jackets that you see people, ah, there it is. It's you see different people wearing people from Mario, Speedwagon, DJs and things like that. Well, uh, you could win one of these, but uh, you'll have to stay with us to find out all the details. We've also had a house party promotion. Actually, it's a house party contest where uh, MTV takes a party to your house. We actually go and uh, go into some lucky Lucky winners, question mark, lucky winners home. Uh, we basically uh, bring bring our VJs in, bring a widescreen set, pump MTV in there, tell them, tell them they can invite as many people as they can fit inside the house, uh, bring all the food, the drinks. Uh, we invite local celebrities in, uh, radio celebrities, television celebrities. If bands are in the area, they can pop in. We just basically, basically turn the house into the hottest party in the city for that, for that night, and MTV picks up the tab, and yeah, Yes, yes, we throw in three hundred dollars to clean the rugs. Here we go. Grab a cup. Ooh, Zip's got a card. Zip's got a card. Grab it, grab it. Okay, Zip. Okay, Zip. Here we go. Here we go. You ready? Zip, you got it. You got it. Zip, I got it, buddy. Me and you, we drew the winner of the MTV contest. There's always a nice little twist. So the average viewer who's been bombarded by every promotion and contest in the world kind of looks at ours and they snicker a bit. Yeah, those kind of things just trigger a fantasy note somewhere in the viewer's eyes. Once we get a concept down of what we want to do, then we pull in our very creative on-air promotion people. And that uh, Marcy Brofman and her staff, who they basically, they're the crazies. They're the ones who uh, put leopard stripes on, on the M's and, uh, and have uh, the M turn into a package of french fries and uh, whatever. I mean, these are the people who, who came up with uh, Pac-Man footage of Pac-Man driving on the highway or whatever. They basically uh, take an idea from here and through their own creativity bring it up to here and do the most important thing and that's basically put it, they put it on tape. This is stuff you want to win, so send a postcard, name, address, and telephone number to MTV Pac-Man Contest Box 1211, Radio City Station, New York, New York, 10101. Postcards must be here by midnight June 7th. Time munches on. We set up a fantasy and we'll take the most fantastic part of an idea and represent it. Win the MTV escape hatch and get away. We had a lot of fun with the escape hatch where we had a hatch open up in a blue sky and your favorite vacation fantasy was there. The MTV escape hatch, the trip, the video recording system, the car, it could all be yours from MTV. We all work together really closely and there's a staff of six core people and once we've decided who's going to be working on a promotion we just sit down and get crazy you know and we think of the strangest thing we can possibly think of fly the mtv party plane when you think of a party plane what do you think about we have a plane the logo sitting on it with little streamers and balloons coming off it's not a real idea and to be able to make something so fantastic real is great and to feel that there's a dream that MTV makes available to you, I think is really, it's an exciting thing, and, and to be able to represent that to people is really exciting. We were very fortunate to have a really nice association with NASA, who have always helped us a lot. So we found there's like a world of wonderful film in archives, and we just went from there, really, and found that it's a very effective way to illustrate a point, and it's it's kind of a nice way to preserve a history of film and a legacy that's there on film.
When you have a logo to identify programming or a corporate venture, it's usually something that the cardinal rule is that it stays the same. And for MTV, which is something so different and so wild, let's do something that never quite shows up the same way twice. And people will never know what to expect, but they'll always know it's MTV. And it's a living thing. It, it changes and it grows hair and it breeds and it does anything you can do. Nina, was there one contest that you really wished you were eligible to win? Yeah, there's one that I wish I had gone on, and that was uh, the Hawaiian luau, going yeah. to Hawaii. Oh. Never been to Hawaii. It was with uh, Pat Benatar and the band and such, but uh, oh. yeah, I wanted to do that. And also, um, the party plane. Yeah. It'd be that neat to go on that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. That'd be nice. Leave the drive and fly into someone else and just party. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. would be Great. fun. Great. Yeah. I agree with those, too. Well, why did Martha Quinn cut her hair? What was Alan Hunter's starring moment? And how does J.J. Jackson react to rock celebrities? We'll have the answers to those questions, and we'll be taking your phone calls when we come back. But first, Nina has one last interactive question for you, which you'll see over another great animation. Okay, well, question number three, I find this to be... Uh, quite a, a personal question as far as uh, us Vitae's are concerned because uh, it's about MTV's music news. And uh, the question is, would you like, button number one, more music news, button number two, less music news, or button number three, about the same amount, just like what we have right now. And you can touch now, so. <laughs> And when we come back, we'll be taking your phone calls as well as looking at the results to that question. So get to your phones and call us now with your MTV questions. Let's spend the night together. Welcome back to MTV Behind the Scenes. We're with our special guest, MTV VJ Nina Blackwood. And let's take a look at the results to that last interactive uh, question. Yes. Okay. I, I'm holding my breath. I know you're interested breath. in this one. I know. <laughs> and, uh, okay. All right. Oh, the same, the same amount. amount. Good. Okay. Percent. And next. Oh, I'm really touched touched on that. that. That's okay. good. That's great. That's good. Great. That's what you good, wanted good. to see. Good. Okay. All right. 44 <laughs> and 31. Good. Great. I agree with that. Columbus. Hi. I was wondering what the guys from Duran Duran are like in real life. <laughs> oh, no. Many people want to know that. I think that's very funny. Yes. <laughs> uh, actually, I don't know them like personal on a personal, personal basis, but I did meet them when uh, they first came over here on their first tour, and they seemed like real nice fellas. They came into the studio a couple times, and uh, so they seem as nice as they seem in their video. I guess that's a good enough answer for that. All right, thanks. 
Mm -hmm. I have a question <laughs> for you, Nina, before we take another call. <laughs> um, a lot of people ask about the different outfits you wear on the show and that. Where do they come from and do you get them free or how does that work? Well, they come from uh, different areas, actually. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of them are our own, and then MTV provides us with some of them, and uh, then also there are designers and such that have been working with us uh -huh. recently. Yeah, because so, you all look yeah. so different and so nice at the same time, but it's always something different. I think it'd be hard to do, you know, if you're working like five days a week, or, or do you work? How many days a week do you actually have to work? F well, five days taping, actually, but, uh -huh. uh, you know, we are also doing promotional appearances on the weekends and such, so we are putting in... Our Seven time, days there, a but week, it's nice. Maybe. It's good. It's yeah. fun because I got uh -huh. a chance to come down here too, which is okay. yeah, real nice. Well, we're glad you made it today. Have another phone call right now. Hi, this is MTV behind the scenes. Where are you calling from? Hello? Uh, is our caller there? The phone melted. The phone melted. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, wait a second on that one. Another question: Have you ever thought about what's the uh, the best part of your job and the worst part of your job? Okay, well, let's see, the optimistic part at first. Um, okay. Everything is really, really nice uh, about the job, basically. I can say that. You know, it is fun. I, I like being involved with the music industry. I also like doing things like this and doing promotional uh, appearances, emceeing shows. I love to do that. Yeah, and in fact, fun. tomorrow I'm supposed to do that in um, Richfield for oh. the Police concert, so I'm happy about that. Now, oh, that's great. The band thing, and I can't say it's that bad because if you like to work, it's a good thing, but uh, there are uh, long hours involved. Yeah. But you know that. Yeah. In TV, you know, in any type of but if you enjoy it, like that. Yeah, yeah, right. So yeah. you know, <laughs> don't get much sleep sometimes, but it's worth right, it, right? But it's okay. <laughs> like last night. Okay, we have another phone call. I believe. Hi, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Where are you calling from? Columbus. Okay, you have a question for Nina. Yeah, it's more like a suggestion, actually. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, I was wondering if uh, you could like have another contest to have a normal person like myself, haha, um, to come on and be a VJ for like an hour or something. The guest VJ. I think that's a great idea. I actually do. I think that that would be a terrific idea and who knows that might be uh, down the road actually. I think it is a good idea. Okay. You can have me. I can give you my number and I'll <laughs> I'd like to no, do it too. I'll give you my <laughs> number. <laughs> no, that's not fair. No. <laughs> it's funny. Hey, Thank you. Thank you for calling. <laughs> Well, when we come back, we're going to get some real behind-the-scenes scoops on some of the MTV VJs, and Nina will be playing rock and roll harp. Don't go away. It was foretold by witches. It was conceived through sorcery and it was to be destroyed by all that is evil. But the courage of one mortal saved it. And so, into an age of darkness, in a time of mysticism, sacrifice, and plunder, there came the only light, the Beastmaster. Born with the strength of a black tiger, the courage of an eagle, made him more than any hero. He was lord and master over all beasts. Ah. The Beast Master. The epic adventure of a new kind of hero. Welcome back to MTV Behind the Scenes. We're here with VJ Nina Blackwood. And while at MTV, we got the behind the scenes scoop on Alan Hunter's biggest thrill, what J.J. Jackson thinks about rock and roll stars, and why Martha Quinn cut her hair. So sit back and watch this. You want to know why it's so short now? Because I went to a very famous salon in New York that I won't name. And I thought, this is great. I'm going to get a, I'm so excited. I'm going to pay a lot of money. I don't care. And I went in, and I walked out with the worst haircut. I mean, it was like, go home and cry for three hours. Get out 10 jars of Dippity-Doo and try to work and let it do something. 
and I could not do any. It was horrible. I went on vacation. I said, oh, I can't. It was so bad, but it was short because this guy was saying, I know just what I'm going to do. It's going so great. I mean, that's why you pay a lot of money to go out who's going to do that. So finally I said, great, go ahead. And I thought, wow, I'm going to look so great. And it was the worst hair. I mean, you know what it was that really flipped me out about it was that when I was little, my mother used to, did you always have short hair when you were little? Pixies. This guy had given me a pixie that my mother would have given me. She, of course, loved the haircut. And I, it was so bad. So then I finally went to this girl who actually cuts Daryl Hall's hair to name drop. And uh, also cuts John Sykes, you know John Sykes, cuts her hair, he cuts his hair. So anyway, I, I went to this girl who, who said, wow, what happened? I said, oh, Lori, my hair. So she, the only thing you can do to make a bad haircut better is make it shorter. But now I like it. I like it short. It's very comfortable. And I'm, I'm happy with this. I think we're going to stay with this for at least two more months. Our publicity department the one who puts out the photos. I say, Martha, if you cut your hair one more time, because just when my hair had gotten pretty long, it was pretty long for a while, it's the David Lee Roth interview, if you ever see it running, it was pretty long. And that's when my last pictures were taken, so now they're no good. <laughs> so they said, if you get your hair cut, change one more time, or no more pictures for you. Perhaps you've seen uh, David Bowie's clip Fashion, and perhaps you saw a little guy in the background with blonde hair, sometimes dancing, sometimes wearing a large nose and a hat. As a matter of fact, my little brother only recognized me with the hat and the large nose on. He didn't recognize me when I had no disguise on. That was a lot of fun. Uh, I happened to know somebody who was working on that clip, the casting director, with David Bowie, and called me up one day and said, would you like to be involved in it? Of course, I said yes. Working with David Bowie is always exciting. I did have a chance to meet with David Bowie, spoke with him for a few minutes. A real interesting guy, actually very down to earth. You might think he's kind of strange, a little bit weird, but David Bowie is a pretty normal guy. And the whole day, the whole shoot took about three days. I actually worked on it two days. And uh, we worked very hard on that too. Started very early in the morning and didn't get off till very late at night, but it was a very worthwhile project. I'm glad I worked on it. And I'm always amazed that sometimes, because of MTV getting so big right now, that sometimes people will come up to us and go like, whoa, and I don't know what to do with that, because I'm just this clown on television. If they like what I'm doing, that's, I, I'm really pleased at that, but it's not like I'm a heart surgeon, you know what I mean? Rod Stewart's a very, very good friend of mine, and when he goes out on stage, you know, and I've seen him a million times, not a million, I'm exaggerating, but still, I've seen him quite a few times over the past 14 years, and, and I can really love his performances, and I can be critical or whatever and get as excited by his performances when he comes off stage. He's just another guy. That's what he does. I mean, the whole thing to keep in the back of your mind is if you were in the Mojave Desert and your car broke down, do you want to see J.J. Jackson or Rod Stewart, or would you rather see a master mechanic? Everything has to be put in its proper perspective. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> continued success to you with your uh, heart plane. Hope you get to do it a lot more. And uh, also continued success to MTV. And stand up here a minute. We have a special surprise for you here. Uh -oh. In honor of MTV's second birthday, no. we have a present for you. All right. Right. Yeah, that's Yay. Nice. Happy birthday, Thank you. MTV. That is Birthday. Yes, it's been Actually, a great two I know, years. Two years. Two I know, years. Gosh. Yes, and many, no. many more. Well, to you and to MTV. 
Okay. Here you go, Maureen. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for Boy, you all right. one too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. We'd uh, like to thank VJ right. Nina Blackwood, her harp, and everyone at MTV who made this show possible. Most of all, we'd like to thank you for joining us. Thank you. Have a thank good you. night and a safe weekend. Yeah, Thanks, Nina. Yeah. How about yeah, so much. Okay. Let me do my rocket ship. Are you rolling? Okay, this. I'd like to show everyone my rocket. This was given to me. This was given to me by my staff for Christmas. You've probably seen this rocket once or twice. Dun, 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 dun. Leo is our pop man, and he's really, very, very important.